The World in Motion 2 design experience is part of SAE's K-12 education initiative. It's a series of two multidisciplinary curriculum units, or challenges, for middle schools. Both challenges are based upon an engineering design process that includes engaging students in various math, technology, and science concepts as they learn how motor vehicles and aircraft are designed and built using social studies and language arts skills to help them interpret consumer data and understand how consumer preferences influence the design of these products. And experiencing the importance of teamwork in utilizing the skills, talents, and ideas of each individual. This video is designed to help you as teachers understand the integration of these disciplines into problem-based curricula as the engineering design process unfolds and demonstrate how this promotes teamwork among the teachers as well as the students. I think one of the most exciting parts of this is that it really enhances team play, team work. They all have to practice sometimes giving up what they really want to do in order to work with the group and that's a valuable lesson. It encourages teamwork or they don't succeed and they understand that from the very beginning that they need to work together as a team. So if there's a problem that we have, there are ways of solving it in a democratic way. It's not just, um, you know, well, we'll draw a straw and solve it that way. They learn they need to talk about it. The students saw that their teachers were working together as a team and we were modeling um, for them what that kind of teamwork could be even though we were crossing the disciplines. They hadn't experienced before um, perhaps having math fit into science or science into uh, social studies or language classes. So to see the teachers working together was a good beginning for them to know how to work together. Challenge 2 presents students with the task of designing and building a motorized toy vehicle. Challenge 3 allows students to apply basic principles of flight to the design and construction of a glider. Both challenges use the same engineering design process used in industry. They begin when the students receive a request for proposal, or RFP, from a fictitious company. Their first task is to read and evaluate the RFP and then use the information as they work through the first six phases of the design experience, setting goals. By using guided questions, you help the students analyze the RFP so they can define the task, identify parameters for solutions, determine the users of the product, and establish the project's objectives. Okay, so what is Mobility Toys proposing that we do in this first paragraph, or what are they introducing to us? Jeff? Very good. Motorized vehicles. That's a good point. It's not just a car. They want several things from this line of toys that they want us to create. So let's talk about what their design needs are. What is their problem? What is Mobility Toys' problem that they need solved right now? Lenny? Um, they need um, a mobile toy or a vehicle that will interest girls and boys, but mostly for girls. Okay, very good. That's what we want to highlight as we go through our RFP. As you facilitate the students' efforts to work through the initial planning, which is a part of setting goals, you're also working to foster both the development of each group's identity and the clarification of individual roles. The engineering design experience emphasizes teamwork as students learn how to identify and solve problems. They learn how their individual skills can contribute to the team's success in meeting the requirements spelled out in the RFP, from the creation of slogans and logos through the design and construction of a final product. After getting the overall picture from the request for proposal, students learn how important teamwork is to the success of the project. They see how sharing ideas helps them define goals and set priorities. During the set goals phase, you begin to encourage the important task of keeping detailed records of their activities as their team works through the process. Once the students have gained an initial understanding of the purpose of the project, they're ready to build the background knowledge required to meet the goals. For example, fundamental to the success of their vehicles in Challenge 2 is an understanding of how gears work. 
Here, students begin building this knowledge by observing a real-world application that's familiar to all of them. What I want you to do now is somebody needs to watch while somebody turns. Count how many times the 15-tooth gear has to go around and how many times the 45-tooth gear has to go around until those lines meet up again. In order to complete the challenge set forth in the RFP, they need to understand the importance of gear ratios and how they affect the performance of the vehicles they'll be designing. In the process of learning how to determine gear ratios using mathematical formulas, this challenge takes mathematics from an abstract realm and turns it into a tool that students use to make their vehicles perform according to their design specifications. Consumer research is another facet of the building knowledge phase of the engineering design experience. Marketing strategies and many of the design and engineering features of their toy vehicles are influenced by the knowledge they gain about consumer preferences from surveys they conduct with their six to ten year old potential customers and their parents. Some of the kids actually went to their old classrooms uh, and went to the elementary schools and, and surveyed a whole classroom of kids. That, that was really a neat part was that the survey could be done face to face, mm -hmm. it could be done over the phone, it could be done on the internet and we had kids mm -hmm. that did all those yeah. things. Students then would come to the math class, we would organize the information, tally the results that they got. We had the students predict first what they thought just from the information their group collected um, their design team should make their toy on wheels appear to be. And then we collected all the information um, from all of the teams. We reanalyzed and we said, now based on what the entire group has collected, what should your design be? Another unique aspect of the program is the cooperation it receives from industry. You as teachers are encouraged to draw upon the expertise of engineers or scientists who will volunteer in your classroom. They become mentors and role models as they show students how the processes used in completing their challenges on a small scale are standard procedure in the real world for successfully bringing new products to market. When they were trying to figure out how the gear ratios worked and trying to put them together, uh, they really didn't understand what the purpose was behind it. It took a lot of work for them to understand what was, what was intended there. Ratios, division, things like that, working with, the, with math, to them it was just math until they actually got into actually working with it and seeing how this math applied to making a body, body move a distance or move at a speed. Very nice. Look at that. In the development of the, of the car, the kids would put together the different uh, materials and to test which materials do best in what application and by which characteristics. Well, the same thing happens in, in, uh, when we go and develop a new product. It's um, almost identical in the way that they test these things that we would test them. We may use some more sophisticated equipment, but the concepts are identical. 